So, marshmallow number one. Boop. Here we go. Um, so marshmallow number one is. Uh, I'm thinking of buying a gaming keyboard. Uh, and or gaming mouse. But I'm not entirely sure if they're worth buying. Are there any uh, big differences between a normal keyboard um, or mouses in than gaming ones? Actually, yeah. Um, one of the things you need to remember about <clears throat> these gaming peripherals is, um, yes, they're expensive, but they are built for a particular reason. And so um, the gaming keyboards, for example, tend to be like for the if you're looking at like mechanical ones, which are considered better, are built for like low latency. So um, it means like a button press, you can you can half half press them and it will still activate the button. So the idea is if you like you're playing a game that requires you to be competitive with, you don't have to push the button all the way. It will always register your keystroke. On the flip side of things, it also makes them very loud. So like, let me see if you can hear this. I'm just going to put my mic. This is basically a, when I talk, you can hear me typing or tapping. And that essentially um, is one of the big issues with a mechanical keyboard is if you don't like the noise, uh, unfortunately, it's very disruptive. <laughs> and like it's uh, some of the people that I play um, Overwatch with, for example, or other games with, uh, they, there's a running joke that they know I'm playing serious when they can hear my keyboard smashing, <laughs> smashing in the background. Um, so yeah, like that's one of the kind of key things. But also, gaming keyboards come in te in like a bunch of different form factors. So the one that I'm using is a ten keyless. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Um, ten keyless. Uh, or so uh, there's other brands available, but I use a Corsair something k65 lux this looks like it does this look like it yes seven key semi k65 rgb mechanical keyboard that looks about right i think this is my one let's look doing a comparison here we go yeah this is definitely my one so let me add this as a window Oop. um There we go. This one here. So no, no push notifications. So this is the keyboard that I currently use. It's a 10 keyless. And basically what I mean by 10 keyless is on the right hand side, usually you have a number pad. Um, so I don't have that. And that can be really annoying for some people, um, not having that number pad. But for one, because I used to land game, so um, I used to have to take some of my equipment because I used to compete, <laughs> take some of my equipment with me. So my mouse, my mouse mat and my keyboard. If I had a 10 keyless with a 10 keyless keyboard, I can simply pop that into like my rucksack or my bag and take it with me. But you got to imagine with an extra bunch of numbers and stuff that I don't use, like it's kind of pointless. Like that, those that number pad is only really necessarily necessary if you're playing things like um, uh, MMOs where you need macros, and then maybe those number pads will come into play. Uh, although those number buttons will come into play, but I don't play any of that stuff really. Um, so I don't have no use for macros. Um, so yeah, this is basically what I have. Uh, and only and only because it's RGB as well. There was There is a version which is like just red. And it also comes with a bunch of keycaps. So the WASD keys here, you can change. In the box, they come with a bunch of different keycaps that are slightly raised to fit the form factor of your fingers. But also you can remove all of these keycaps as well and replace them with your own. So that's like an, another advantage of um, using uh, the using the uh, gaming keyboard over a standard keyboard. And then for mice, there's like a whole bunch of other advantages for that. So for mice, you have um, they have this thing called a DPI. So it's a high sensitivity. So depending on what games you're playing, you might need a mouse that needs incredibly high DPI so that you like the slightest movement on your mouse will take you like halfway across the screen. Um, for me, I think one movement will take me somewhere along. I'm just looking at it now because I've got two screens. Well, one slight flick of the wrist will probably take me about a, 
an eighth of the way through past my screen. So I have a I have my my mouse set to low uh, sensitivity, um, because I need that for a lot of like the FPS games that I play. Um, but yeah, and and then you got to think about mouse pads as well because I use a hard surface. So I don't know if you can hear it. Well, if I talk and, and move it at the same time, you can probably hear it. But it's like you can hear the mouse scratching across it because it's a hard surface. Sometimes some people prefer soft surfaces. Um, it's really down to your personal preference, uh, which particular um, mouse mat, mouse and keyboard that you use. Best thing I can ever recommend is to go into a store that has all of this out and just play about with it. Like run your fingers across them, tap all the keys and see how it feels for you. But there is definitely 100% a competitive edge by using um, a gaming mouse keyboard or a different mouse pad as well, or mouse mat. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty pretty much it in terms of that one. Uh, marshmallow number two. Let's have a look. Marshmallow number two is um, this. This will probably start a war, but it must be asked: How do you pronounce scone? Officially, <laughs> realistically. The official pronunciation is scone, S-cone, scone, scone. But I like to annoy people and call them scones because when you eat them, they're gone. So it's scone. Um, but anyone that says otherwise, uh, it is definitely 100% pronounced scone. Uh, nope, scone. No, it's definitely 100% present announced scone. So uh, you can't argue with that because if you type it into any, any um chat they'll say scone so like any anything that reads out it's just you just can't argue this is the simplest simplest the easiest marshmallow question i've ever had in my entire life <laughs> uh question number three all right uh why are my friends not very fun whenever i ask them to do something they're always busy please uh help me say it uh, I feel like that's a subjective thing. Why are your friends not fun? The key question is, I think you should, the question you should be asking yourself really is, why are you not finding your friends fun? What is it that they're doing or not doing that is making them not fun? Is it that they are um, not available all the time? In which case, does that necessarily mean that they're not fun? Um, or... Is it a case of, um, I don't know, uh, you need to explore that friendship together, that relationship that you have with them to find out how to make things fun. Um, I feel like every, every relationship, whether it be a friendship, um, a love relationship, um, family, etc, etc, like most of the things can be solved through communication. So it's probably just a case of like, hey, you um uh do you want to try doing this like pitch it to them what's your pitch around what you want to do like for example i know i don't find phasmophobia fun i will play it i don't think it's that fun but it's a case of like whoever is pitching me to play phasmophobia needs to give me a good reason to why as to why it's going to be a little bit fun um and if they're they're their comeback is essentially, oh, I'll just play because then that's not going to win me over. But if they're like, oh, play because we've got X, Y, Z playing as well. And, you know, it's only going to be for this long and I promise it will be fun. And if it's not, you're free to go, like that sort of thing like that, then maybe I will end up playing it. Um, so this is a really difficult question in the sense that it's subjective um, and everything is subjective. Fun is a subjective thing. What's fun for me is not fun for you or vice versa, you know? Um... Okay, what's the the next one? Number four. Are there any terrible games you own that you'd like to play on stream? Well, that's a good question. I own a bunch of games, like and actually, actually a bunch of games. Uh, let me see. Can I? Let's have a look if I can share this. Um. Hmm. I, I think my, if I'm looking at my current, yeah, I've got 563 games. Like I, I did, 
can't I can't say I I um know what these games are. Um but a little bit bigger. Yeah I can. There we go. There we go. This is much better. Okay, so <clears throat> this is my current like Steam library, right? Um I have a couple of them in my favorites. I haven't played Among Us in forever. Like actually forever. I've got Beat Saber, um, which is one of my favorite games of all time. Um, I have it on PC and X uh, Xbox. PC and um, Oculus Quest. Code Vein I really don't like, so I don't think I will ever play that again. And it's just because it's a Dark Souls -y game and I don't get along with them. I basically completed this actually. I can uninstall that one. Remove from favorites. Dead by Daylight I enjoy. As you can see, like a lot of them are games that um like rhythm games and like pick up and play games. Like Fall Guys I hate. I actually genuinely hate Fall Guys. Um so I don't know if I would like to play it on stream. I have before, but I just I absolutely hate this. Hate it. It's, it's, it sucks. Terrible games. King of Crabs is a terrible game, but I will definitely 100 percent play that on stream. Uh, so don't worry about that. That is definitely 100 percent coming. Um and then it goes into like a whole bunch of other games that I have. So 564 games. Like, I don't know. Um, let me go through here and see if there's any games here that are genuinely terrible. Like some of these I've just bought as part of um, Humble Bundles. So like they just turn up on a Humble Bundle. Um, and like some of them I didn't even know were part of that bundle. So yeah, it's quite funny. Um, what else have I got in here? It looks like a terrible game. Um, Borderlands is quite a good game. A lot of them are like story games. Uh, so like single player story games. I don't think I've got anything on here that is like genuinely terrible. Um, Crisis, Cyber Dimension. I want to do the Cyber Dimension Neptune games. 100%. I think I'm going to do that on a Thursday once I've completed through Medium. Hmm. What else have we got here? The three racing games in general, I think, are terrible games. <laughs> I don't really like racing games. I don't know what about what it is about them. Um, I just have them because they're kind of just a like fun pick up and play thing. This is a terrible game. Footlow. Um, it's basically a um, it's basically a football game except um with like 2D characters and you can basically if you've ever played like Mario Superstar Soccer it's kind of like that but really crappy like really really bad I do want to play the Gun Girl games as well because these are actually genuinely terrible games they are it's a game where you basically have a gun and you shoot clothes off people um, but it's not on a band list of Twitch so I can play them <laughs> um this is a terrible game uh want to play I don't know. I don't know. Like, again, I don't think there are terrible games. As you can see, I've got like pretty much almost hyper every Hyper Dimension Neptunia game. I love, I love the series. Um, Killer is Dead. I need to go through again. Still, the Lego games are some of the best games in, of all time. Like, don't at me. Lego games are so good, so so good. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, Shadow of War, I believe, wasn't a great game for me. It was I found that hella boring, hella boring. Octodad, this is a terrible game. Really short, um, and you control like an octopus with your with the analog sticks only. And obviously, he's got eight arms, so lots of stuff stick to it, and you got to kind of control him to make him go. Eventually, like um, he, he gets married, but you have like a kid. And you're married to this, um, or we are going to get married to this, like human, and it's such a it's such a weird weird game. Like, I think to start with, you have to make a coffee, so you have to grab like the coffee mug, but it's so hard because the controls are so sloppy, intentionally, and because of all of his tentacles and they stick to everything. Like you you'll pick up like random pieces of paper, uh, and all that sort of stuff. I remember in the I think the last level where you get married, they go down in the church and you have to get him dressed. So you got to go find his tie and you got to go find his blazer and a handkerchief. And then like you have to put them on and then you walk down the aisle, but like his tentacles get stuck on the on the chairs and stuff. So they start dragging all the, the benches. It's, it's, it's such a mess. It's such a bad game, but I enjoyed it, but it was a bad game. It's a terrible game. Um, 
what else have we got here? Outlast, I don't think I will ever play because I, I genuinely, genuinely suck at um, horror games. Like, I, I find them so, so, like, I just can't do them. I can't do them. Like, I'll give up. I will generally give up. Luckily, the medium isn't that scary, so I think we're okay. Polynomial, I kind of want to play. Uh, oh, this is a terrible game that I will do. I've already decided. But Run with the Mad God is like a an MMO pixel game where if it's got permadeath, so if you die, you die. But it's like a bullet hell MMO. Um, and then what else have we got? Um, let's see. Sekiro, I didn't even complete. I think I've done like... I don't remember. I hate it though. <laughs> um... It's because it's another Dark souls -y game. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. I don't think I've got, like, actual, like, terrible games that I feel like I've never, like, I, I should play them because they're so, so bad. Like, I don't think there's anything here that I've purposely bought on the premise that it is a terrible game. Um, I still haven't finished Undertale, to be fair, so I feel like I've played that. Um, I've never gone for it. Oh, I need to update the VR chat. Um... I think I need to go for it because it's like everyone's favorite game and I've never completed Undertale and everyone loves to talk about it. Quitting a Sekiro game. wonder how that feels, right? I wonder how that feels, Jun. Quitting a Sekiro game. Um, but yeah, actually, I lied. The, the, the one game that I know is genuinely uh, like sucks is um, that one that I play on stream. What's it called? M something. Ah. Mitsurugi Kami, uh, that one, this one, this one is, it's a hack and slash with like schoolgirls. So I thought this might be fun, but it's not. It's terrible. Really, really, really bad. Um, no, Medium's a good game. The other one I want to do though, um, I want to at some point go through all of my Senran Kagura games. So this one we've already gone through, it's the, the rhythm one, but I will play through Shinobi Versus because I love this game. Shinobi Versus is a good one. So those are like two games I think I'm definitely going to go through. I have a list of games that I definitely want to go through. Um, so a lot of them, like, yeah, I don't know. It's just it's, there's, there's a lot of games I want to go through and I have 560 something games. So I've got plenty of time. I don't want to rush it. Some of them are going to be like um, uh, complete, complete completion games. So from beginning to end. And I've got a bunch of honestly, this is just my Steam library. Like, I've got a whole, like, I've got a whole PlayStation library and an Xbox library and a Switch library to go through as well. So I, the possibilities are endless, are endless. Watch this space. But hey, if people have found some stuff on here that are multiplayer that they'd really like to play with me, like, hit me up. You know where to find me. Okay, <laughs> let's go ahead and go to... Marshmallow number. What, what are we on now? Four? We're on four. Marshmallow number five. Here we go. Um. Uh, what do you think about Jun? Uh, <laughs> Jun is. Jun is a bottom. That's what I think. He's always going to be a bottom. Um. And also, I think. Jun is has uh, is very good at talking to people and feeling um, relaxed. Oh, he's really good at helping people to feel relaxed. I would say. Um, Jun is also uh, it's like a how would I explain him? He's kind of like a, a like a teddy, you know, you, or a puppy. A puppy. Let's say a puppy. It's kind of like a puppy. It's like very excited, um, really cool, wants to do everything, wants to look at everything and touch everything. And all you need to do is pat him on the head and then he'll be happy, you know, and just be like, okay, good boy. Um, and you can tell him what to do as well. So he essentially is like a puppy. Like you, you can train them to do stuff. You could probably train Jun to do stuff. Uh, <laughs> but that's because he's so much of a bottom. So. Yeah, I think that's that's. I don't want to go 
too much into Jun because he'll he'll look look at this back and go, hmm, interesting. I'll fight him later. <laughs> Trade Jun to do stuff. <laughs> you can, you can. He's very um uh I would say he would Jun would give in to subliminal stuff. Like you can you can plant thoughts into his head and then he'll be like, oh. Yeah, I'll go with that flow. Um, uh, oh, the other thing about Jun as well is he's very, uh, he's very um, here and now, you know, kind of like spontaneous is the word. He's spontaneous, um, so he needs he needs somebody to um, you know, Jun. You don't get a say in what I think of you. This is my opinion. So <laughs> okay, um, yeah, he's very. Uh, uh, what was I even saying? I've lost my train of thought now. Anyway, uh, yeah, he's very influenced by everyone. Um, I think Jun's Photoshop skills are sick. Uh, no, Jun's Photoshop skills are awful. Um, I think it's funny when every time he melts down when something is not working very correctly. Um, it's like his Photoshop skills are sick in the sense that they make me want to throw up. <laughs> But he'll learn, maybe. I don't think he will. He will, maybe, learn something about that. <laughs> it's just, it's just funny. It's just funny to watch him, him struggle. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. He's a little puppy that you want to pet sometimes, and he'll be happy with a few pats on the head. And you can train him to do stuff, and you can tell him to do stuff, and he'll do it. And it's just very excitable. That is um, the puppy. He's just trying. And it's Jun. That's what that's what I think of Jun. There we go. And also, I'm pretty sure Jun sent this one in. So there. <laughs> okay. Um, that was number five. Let's go to number six. Number six. Uh, I saw your tweet about Kali calling out indie VTubers. What what do you mean by that? Uh, sorry, didn't mean to kiss my teeth. Uh, <laughs> um. Uh, what I meant by that isn't that she's calling out every VTuber and saying that every VTuber is stupid. It's she's calling out VTubers that um, need to kick up the butt. Um, Kali, Kali, Kali's song is literally, if you listen to the entire thing in context, and so if, if VTubers are getting, first and foremost, if VTubers are getting upset about her song and her lyrics, like, in the nicest way possible, sit the f down. <laughs> sit the f down and listen to her song again, and then tell tell ask yourself if you should be angry at what Kali is saying, because Ka what Kali is saying, like usually, okay, so usually Kali in her songs, um, she has like, she's very um, what's the word, imaginative with the lyrics. Her lyrics usually dance around subjects, um, and they're self implied, and they're very thoughtful. And there's a, a second meaning or a deeper meaning to the the compositions of the language that she puts together, um, and so, and you know, I've been listening to Kali since before she stopped reaping. Like when once she joined Hollow Live, obviously she she stopped reaping. But like I've been listening to I listen to let, let's call, well, I've been listening to Baby Kali for a long time, and like her lyrics are, are fucking amazing. And you, you got to listen to some of her songs um, if you want to. Like if if you know you know I'm not, I'm not I don't I'm not gonna like out her or anything, but like Baby Kelly songs were very similar in the sense of like they had like a deeper meaning behind it. Now with this particular song that Kelly put out, this was like more or less the first song that she kind of went out and put lyrics out and made them bluntly. Yeah, she danced around a couple of word plays and stuff like that, which is traditional of a rapper, but her song was essentially straight up tough love like. You know, um, listen to this, and I'll, I want you all to take note because essentially, like, it's, she wants everybody to succeed, and this song is is I would say if you listen to the freaking song, it's a motivational song. She's telling you she wants to see you succeed, but she wants you to make like to know that you do have to work for it. Um, Raza, essentially, the song was for people who wanted fame and recognition but did zero for it. <laughs> Yes and no. Like it, it, I think the song the song was meant to be originally it was meant to be a motivational 
song for people that are stuck or not knowing what to do um and obviously i think in a street basically in a stream she before the song came out she said that like um you know she 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 herself the words of her mouth was i want to see everyone succeed but you need to stop tweeting and make content that was literally what she said before this song went out then like a couple of weeks later the song came out um and now in those couple of weeks up to the run-up to the song everyone's like took that segment that she said and took it out of context and made it appear like she was adding indie vtubers basically saying that like indie vtubers are like trash and part of that reason is like because of hero high because of, you know, we all know hero high he puts videos out and he he loves to work on the drama like he was basically saying that they that she was taking shots at indie vtubers when they weren't she wasn't really she was just saying that like if you do want to succeed you need to put in the work and now in the in the run up to that song, loads of people were saying, "Oh, she doesn't know anything. She she's she only can, she can only say that because she's part of a corporate corporation now. Like she can only say that because she had it easy, blah blah blah." And that must have triggered something in her to go, "Hold on a second, it's never been easy for me as a content creator. I've had to put in the work to get where I am. Yes, she's part of a corporation now where she's had some success a lot more. Been it's it's." supercharged her current success into something a lot bigger but like don't say that she doesn't she doesn't do this right and so um yeah if you actually genuinely listen to the song a lot of it is about um trying to encourage vtubers in general to become better he's trying to encourage you to become better by creating those content basically she's saying that create content and content can be anything like content can literally you can create content on twitter i'm not saying you can't ever create content on twitter because twitter is good for like short video content so anything less than two minutes 20 seconds which is their limit for video content it's good to post art so if you're an artist right but all you're tweeting is like hey follow me hey um uh you know I, i'm still gonna pre-debut or i'm still pre-debut or hey like um follow me because I'm cute or whatever it is that you're saying I'm not putting anything out you're not putting any pngs you're not putting any art you're not putting any videos you haven't you've created a channel but there's nothing on it like you can't say that you're you're not doing anything honestly you can't say you're not doing anything properly for your brand because like this is something we've discussed in an episode before but your twitter followers are not going to equal your subs on and on youtube or twitch and especially like you're building your you're building a following based on that without any content like by the time you push content out people are going to come in and listen to it and they'll be like what is this content this isn't what i expected um so the best thing to do is literally to be like hey this is i know i've got a model in coming up i know i'm waiting for it to get rigged and designed but in the meantime here listen to um, here's here is my my rough design of what I want to be or um, if you're an artist like in the meantime check out some of my other work and this is what I'm doing like is there some progression or of, of work that I've been I'm doing in the sidelines or here is a video of uh, one of my streams without my without my model like you could still put all that out as content you can still create memes as content but like if you're creating memes as content create them don't just take them from other people and um you know or retweet these follow for follow things or these these chain things on twitter such as like drop your drop your png stuff without even having a png in the first place like that's not creating content essentially what i'm saying is like people who are taking it a little bit to heart are probably and this is going to be controversial are probably only taking it to heart because it it, it rings truth in them but for every other indie VTuber out there that's looking at that, that's that's listening to the entire song in context, it's basically a kick up the butt. She's literally saying, look, I know you're struggling. I know you, I get it because I've been there. Um, But keep doing it and don't give up. You need to have some sort of tenacity with it. So that's it. Um, But that's my little piece, I guess, on Kali, Kali's song. It's a, it's a little bit... Ooh. It's a bit of an interesting subject, honestly. Um, And I think you can go on and on and on about it. But ultimately, like, yeah, I think people are just taking it out of context.
Uh, okay, next marshmallow. Mm, this is the last one. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's just a heart. Thank you. Whoever you are. Um, slide into my DMs. Tell me who you are. <laughs> I want to find out or so I can send you some hearts back. Okay. <laughs> Love you, bye. <laughs>